Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's DataVox webinar, Feel Safe Returning to Work, presented by Shooter Detection Systems. My name is Jessica, and I will be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this webinar through Cisco WebEx events, and the audio can be heard through your PC or by calling into the phone number listed and with the access code provided in your confirmation email or calendar invite for this event. Today's webinar is being recorded on behalf of DataVox, and participation in this event indicates your consent to being included in that recording. All attendees will receive an email with a link to the completed recording 24 to 48 hours post-event. If you have any questions for the presenters at any time during this presentation, you may submit those questions via the Q&A feature to the bottom right of your screen. This should already be turned on. Simply click Q&A and the text box will appear. Our panel will be responding to these questions throughout the presentation via text and will respond verbally at the conclusion of the presentation. If you are in need of support or have a question not pertaining to today's topic, please utilize the chat feature and I will be happy to assist you. This feature is separate from the Q&A feature and can be turned on by clicking the chat bubble in the lower center of your screen. Now that we have reviewed the features of this webinar, we would like to start off today's presentation with a few words from our Director of Physical Security at DataVox, Scott Ferguson. Scott, the floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jessica. And I just want to say thank you again for the wonder, wonderful job you've been doing putting all this together. See, we've done quite a few webinars together now, and they've all been very enjoyable. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, like Jessica said, my name is Scott. I'm the Director of Physical Security here at DataVox. We also have on the, on the WebEx, Courtney Ferguson, who is our Senior Sales Solution Architect, and Mike Bebchak, who is our VP. We wanted to personally thank you for taking the time this morning to attend our webinar series. Uh, we have a few more of these scheduled this week. Uh, the next ones coming up are SOFAS, Aruba, and HPE. Uh, today's webinar will cover shooter detection along with the fever detection systems from SDS. And like Jessica said, we're gonna be answering questions as we go throughout this webinar. Please submit them. Uh, there'll be two separate sections. One will be for shooter detection, one will be for fever. At the end of shooter detection, we'll answer the questions verbally. And at the end of fever detection, we'll answer them verbally as well. So usually you guys have a lot of great questions to ask, so keep them coming, try to stump us. Uh, with that being said, I'll hand that over to you, Eric, and let you take it from here. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Scott. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you again for taking the time out to um, attend this webinar. As Scott and Jessica said, we will uh, touch on two of our systems today, one of which is the active shooter detection system. Um, after that, we will go over our fever detection system. As uh, Scott said, my name is Eric Shackley. Uh, we also have on the line with us Brian John Pally, who is uh, our Vice President of Sales for the Eastern Region. He will be addressing your questions uh, when my presentation is over. So uh, the first presentation will be shooter detection. Uh, I'm going to show you guys a video that gives you kind of a general idea of what the system uh, looks like, what it was designed for, and how we use it. I will then go into a PowerPoint presentation uh, to go into a little more detail about the system. And then I will follow up with another video that shows you guys what this system would look like in a real life scenario. So give me just a second. I want to share my screen here and play the first video. Shooter Detection. Welcome to Shooter Detection Systems, the industry's premier choice in gunshot detection. SDS has decades of experience in the development and delivery of gunshot detection technology, protecting customers across the globe in schools, corporations, airports, government agencies, and many other public and private facilities. The Guardian Indoor Active Shooter Detection System provides immediate and accurate location of the active shooter, alerting in under one second and with zero false alerts. At the heart of the Guardian system is a sensor. Within the sensor, finely tuned microphones listen for the acoustic signature of a gunshot. Shot detected and infrared flash detection sensors validate the flash of the gunshot. Guardian immediately acts on real-time gunshot information with 100% accuracy. 
Within the first second of detecting a gunshot, Guardian sends accurate notifications to building occupants and first responders simultaneously through a mapping interface, SMS text messaging, and email alerts with shot location. The Guardian system can also easily automate emergency lighting and other alarms, as well as send audible messages directly to security handheld radio and public address systems. Security alert, shot fired, lobby post one. Having this invaluable information gives building occupants the opportunity to quickly and safely evacuate the premises and provides first responders critical information so they can directly target the threat. With our technology partners, we've combined Guardian with the security technologies you're already using to seamlessly integrate gunshot detection into your active shooter response plans. With our technology partner integrations, the Guardian system automates action in video management, access control, mass notification, and other critical emergency management platforms. Shot detected. With these certified integrations, we provide both on-site and remote security operations teams with an integrated end-to-end -end solution for managing gunshot detection events. We provide real-time situational awareness necessary to reduce response time and therefore save lives. When time is of the essence, any delay may cost lives. Guardian significantly reduces that delay. Guardian Integrated Solution provides instant shot location information, can initiate lockdown procedures, and pull live and recorded video from cameras directly in the incident area. This integration provides instant notification to first responders, event action and integration notification platform, and can simultaneously alert designated monitoring facilities around the globe. Shooter detection systems will allow us to know exactly who this is. By putting technology in place and getting that information, that, that threat information to the officers who are responding, it makes it safer for the officers, but it also, and more importantly, makes it safer for the citizens and the civilians that are in the building. When lives are on the line, you can trust SDS's network of global certified systems integrators and technology partners to bring you truly reliable solutions. Seconds matter most. Okay, so again, just an overall view of the system. And let me pull up the PowerPoint slide for you. Okay, so a little bit about the company. Uh, if you see here at the bottom right-hand corner, these are our two founders, uh, the CEO, Christian Connors, and the CTO, Ron Fowler. Uh, along with those two on the advisory team, uh, we have a former deputy administrator of FEMA, a former Boston police commissioner, a former Navy SEAL, as well as a former FBI active, or I'm sorry, shooter expert who's now retired. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of experience that uh, went into developing this system. A little bit about the founding of the company uh, in the early 90s. The uh, system was developed for our uh, soldiers out in the field. In 2013, the system was uh, reduced to the capability of an indoor system, which is what we will be discussing today, known as Guardian. <clears throat> you can see here in 2013, it was created. In 2019, we developed a wireless system, which I will go into a little more detail here in just a moment. So an active shooter response, the most critical component in that response is information. What does that mean? So if there was a sound, what was that sound? Was it an actual gunshot or was it a balloon popping? Was it someone dropping a book, slamming a locker? Did they throw a firecracker? Uh, if it was a shot, when was the first shot taken? So our system will give you a timeline. Where is the shooter in the building? Obviously that's a, a critical component as well. Who is the shooter? What do they look like? And then finally, how many shooters are there? Is this a coordinated attack or is it a lone wolf? So everybody has heard of uh, run, hide, fight. Uh, the information that we provide is to the building occupants as well as first responders. 
which allows you the capability to make a decision to run high five. The example that I like to use is, uh, let's say you're in a school and you're a teacher and you hear a sound in the hallway. You're not 100% uh, sure what the sound was. So if it was a, let's say a locker slamming, then you as the teacher would not receive any type of information from our system. If it was a gunshot, then there are multiple ways of receiving that information, which I, again, I'll go into a little more detail in just a moment. But let's say, for example, you have a cell phone, we can actually send out text messages. So you as the teacher, you receive information that there was a shot fired and it tells you exactly where the shooter is in the building. Now, if the shooter is on the other side of the building, you could take your students and exit out of the building to get them away from danger. Conversely, if the shooter is on your side of the building, it's in the hallway, he or she is two or three doors down from your classroom, you may want to lock the door <clears throat> and hunker down. So uh, in a nutshell, the information that we send out gives you the capability to make a decision in real time to run hide fight. What does the system look like? The way we determine whether a shot has been fired is through a sensor that we mount on the wall or ceiling. These sensors have what we call dual factor authentication. What does that mean? If you look at the right hand side of the slide here, you'll see that uh, there are microphones that listen for the pop of the gun or the bullet leaving the gun. And it also looks for a muzzle flash through infrared sensors. We, today, we are the only system in the marketplace that does both. Everyone else listens for an audio sound. We actually look for both, <clears throat> for both, excuse me. Some of the key features of the sensor, uh, we can alert you within less than a second. It detects a shot within less than a second. We can detect calibers as low as 22 and all the way up to 50 caliber and everywhere in between. This is what the system looks like uh, if you were to hardwire. Now remember earlier I mentioned we have a wireless system today and I'll uh, go over that here in a couple of slides later. But <clears throat> for a hardwired system, this is what it would look like. If you think of say a camera system that you have today, cameras are connected to a PoE switch through CAT5 or CAT6 cabling. We have the exact same network uh, topography. <clears throat> the sensor goes back to a PoE switch for power, and then the PoE switch connects to a network switch. On the right-hand side of the screen, you will see at the top right-hand corner is our client, which is our situational awareness map. I'll show you that uh, here in just a moment. Below that, <clears throat> you see where it shows text messaging and email. So we can actually send messages, as I mentioned earlier, to mobile phones, via text or email, but we can also connect to uh, radios. We can send out audible alerts to handheld radios if you have a, an officer on site or if you have a, a security officer walking the floor or the uh, grounds and they have a radio, we can send messages to that radio. If you have an intrusion alarm, we can uh, integrate with that as well. And if you have a central monitoring station, we can send them an alert signal where they in turn can dial 911 for you. We can tie into uh, your lighting. If you have certain lighting that you want to use uh, to alert people. For example, if uh, you have say uh, uh, software programmers tend to wear headphones a lot when they're working. So they may not hear uh, a message over your PA system or they may not get a message on their phone you can either uh, set up lighting to go off, or you can also integrate uh, with uh, your desktop computers. If you have a mass notification system, such as an Everbridge or a Mutual Link or something to that effect, we can partner with those guys to integrate with their system so you can blast this out to as many people as necessary and also, again, take over computers if you so desire. In the middle of the screen, you'll notice that we can also in integrate with video surveillance. So if you wanted to tie into your cameras, 
uh, once a sensor goes off, you can tell uh, certain cameras to pull up video feeds. And you may have seen that in the video that I showed a moment ago, uh, but uh, we have some other partners for that as well, such as um, Genetech, uh, Vigilon, Milestone, just to name a few. <clears throat> Finally, uh, we do have some clients that uh, integrate to their local police departments. So uh, we have a client that uh, their software, their situational awareness map, will actually show up on the dispatch at the local police department if and when a shot is fired. So uh, I'll go into that in a little more detail as well uh, here in just a moment. So the wireless sensor, um, <clears throat> there are a couple of ways that you can utilize this sensor. Uh, you can use it as a completely wireless sensor, meaning that uh, these things are powered by batteries. And then the signal is sent to an access point, which if you look in the middle of the screen, we call those LORAs. Those are, that's short for long range. <clears throat> if you wanted to uh, utilize power, I'm sorry, cabling for power as backup, these sensors have a DC connection on the back of them as well. So again, you have multiple options. You can use uh, battery powered and you can run say a 16-2 cable back to a power supply as backup. Uh, we have some clients that they do not use batteries at all. They simply have daisy chained their sensors back to a power supply and they utilize that <clears throat> for the power. So it's a couple of the key features uh, one of the things that we like to mention about our system is that it does not affect your current Wi-Fi. So uh, today, you use your Wi-Fi for data. We do not uh, utilize that same spectrum. This is a system that uses the old 915 megahertz spectrum, which if you'll remember back in the 90s when we had cordless phones, that was the spectrum that they used then, and we are now using it for, for our system. Uh, back to the uh, batteries I mentioned a moment ago. These have uh, a recommended one-year battery life. So uh, let's say if you were to install a system, uh, you would work with uh, Databox to create some type of service agreement where they would come in and change the batteries for you once a year. This is the situational awareness map. This is what the software looks like if it were a standalone system. Uh, if you'll notice uh, the green dots that are on the screen, those are the uh, locations of the sensors. <laughs> if a shot was detected, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, there's a green dot with a red circle around it. That is what the uh, software would look like <laughs> the second that a shot was fired. Now, uh, to follow the shooter through the building, we can actually keep track of their path pathway by uh, the color of the sensors changing color. So if you look at the lobby on the right-hand side, the sensor is yellow. Below that, it's orange. And then to the left of that, it's red. So what this is doing is it's creating what we call a breadcrumb trail. So once the shot is fired, again, you'll see that red circle. But then after a second shot is fired, every subsequent shot, the sensor will change color. So you can literally follow the shooter through the building. Also, um, I, probably not very legible, but on the bottom right-hand side of the map, uh, there's a green, blue, and yellow uh, dot for sensor status. What that is doing is it is uh, <clears throat> giving you uh, the health, if you will, of the sensor. So if for something uh, were to go wrong with the sensor, say, for example, uh, the cabling goes bad or someone damages the sensor by hitting it with a bat or shooting it or whatever the case may be, <clears throat> when the sensor is damaged, you will get an immediate notification. And on the software, you will see this color that will tell you that uh, it was either damaged or disabled or offline. Uh, it also will tell you the sensor status by um, what we call a heartbeat, meaning that these sensors send a signal back to the software every few seconds to tell the software that, hey, I'm still here, I'm still working properly. So uh, they are actually monitoring their own health. On the right-hand side of the screen, uh, the uh, map that you see, 
There's uh, text messaging, which if you'll notice, it says shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four. That will give you the time that the shot was fired as well as the location of the shooter. So what you're seeing on this screen here is the same thing that you would see on your phone if we were to send you a text message. That way, you as a building occupant will know the location of the shooter throughout the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the event of the uh, shooter detection. Uh, let's see, I like to show this screen because uh, if you look at the top hand, uh, or top of the slide, it shows you how long it can take for someone to be notified uh, during an active shooting event. Uh, the uh, Alice Institute and the FBI, who are the organizations that track these, uh, have shown in, in um, their uh, testing that anywhere from 13 and a half to 18 minutes it takes for someone to be notified. Now, with our guardian system, as you can see at the bottom hand side of the slide here, uh, you get notified within less than five seconds. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier some of the uh, partners that we have. This is just a few of them. This is by no means an, an exhaustive list, but uh, we do have video surveillance as well as uh, access control. And uh, we talked about mass notification. The ones that we do not have a partnership with in the software integration, we have what we call a C-level box, which is a dry contact relay. So if you do not have, or if you have a system that we do not have an integration with today, we can still use that C-level box to integrate with your system. It's just through hardware as opposed to software. So this is our tester. Uh, the blue box that you see there, this is actually something that you would work with Databox on. Uh, they would come out and service your system with this blue box that you see. And what that does is that individually test each sensor to make sure that it's still working properly. There is also two other ways that you can test our system, one of which is using your mouse by clicking on the sensor in the software. You can test it by doing that. And you can also test it by shooting blank. Now we have some of our clients will actually uh, have SWAT teams come in or local police department and run test drills. And while they're doing that, they will fire blanks to test uh, each sensor as well. So those are the three ways that we can test our system. Some of the certifications we have uh, <clears throat> on the left-hand side, you'll notice that uh, there's a red label. It's called Safety Act Certified. That means that we have been fully tested and vetted by the Department of Homeland Security, and we are certified through them. I mentioned to you earlier that our sensors have a dual factor authentication, and we're the only ones in the marketplace that do that. We are also the only shot detection system in the marketplace today that has this certification. In addition to that, you can note, see that we're also certified by the British government as well as the Australian government. Some of our target markets, um, it, <clears throat> we have uh, oil and gas companies, uh, the corporations, airports, hospitals, schools, utilities. There's, uh, we have quite an array of, of clients that we work with today. Uh, in the middle, you'll see it says we have over 65 million hours of installed time. That's actually old information. We, we are currently more than 100 million hours uh, tested and utilized in real world lifetime uh, globally. This is just a gallery of some of the pictures. I, I show this to show you guys what the sensor would look like if it was mounted on a wall or on the ceiling. They go on a double gang box. They have a very low profile. So unless someone were to point them out to you, you probably wouldn't even notice they are there. Okay, in closing with this, um, I point out that um, it's just a proven enterprise solution. Uh, again, we've been out uh, since 2013 in the marketplace. Uh, the uh, other folks that are out there today have, are not near as tested as we are. Um, we have a lot of our clients will tell you that um, you know, we've been successful in passing all of the InfoSec and pen testing through Fortune 500 companies. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are installed globally. 
and uh, we're a household name, again, in oil and gas, social media, insurance companies, et cetera. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is show you guys a video of what this system would look like in a real life scenario. We had a, um, uh, the Today Show, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with, did a, an expose on our system, and <clears throat> we actually ran it while they were in the building. So give me just a second. Important story for all of us. This latest case happening at a Naval Medical Center in San Diego. Reports of an active shooter spread like wildfire, and you can see the dramatic video here. Employees walking out with their hands up. They describe chaos inside, and so it uh, turns out this was a false alarm. Somebody heard gunshots. They called it into police, but thankfully everything was fine. But this latest case showing us how scary this can be, how we're all on edge at work. So what would you do if a shooter came into your office this morning? New technology that can actually spot a shooter and alert police before you're in danger. I need to cops here right away. Somebody got shot. I got shot. When the call comes in, a male with a shotgun. Too often, it is real. Multiple shots fired, multiple people down. Workplace shooters caught on camera. This one inside for an hour before police finally locate him. But what if you and police could know exactly where the shooter is the moment the first shot is fired? These new high-tech sensors can do it, called the Active Shooter Detection System. This is the sensor right here, and normally this would be installed up and down the office hallways. How does this work? When a gun is fired, there's a flash of light that comes out of the end of the gun, and it's followed by the bang of the bullet being fired. So what the sensor does is it looks for that flash with these infrared sensors in the bottom. And then we have highly sensitive tuned gunshot detection microphones on top that listen for the bang of the gun. The system can even pinpoint the shooter's location within inches. Okay, so let's check it out. Right now I'm inside an office building where those sensors have been installed and set up. We have a weapons expert downstairs who's gonna pose as our active shooter today. He's gonna walk around with that big gun and fire blanks and see if the sensors get set off. Meanwhile, I'm gonna be inside this office like so many of us are, sitting at my cubicle. We're gonna see if it works. Will I get the alert? Will it tell me where that shooter is? The second he fires the first shot. Shot detected. Wow, it just popped up on my computer. And here's the map. Look, I can see where the shot was, exactly in the lobby. The shooter makes his way upstairs, even going inside this conference room. Firing again. Now I'm getting a text alert. Shots fired. Executive office, floor two. There was just another, another shot right here. Now I know he's close. But the system doesn't only alert employees. It automatically triggers an emergency call to local police the moment the first shot is fired. A shot detected. The first one, a lobby shot detected. The other men's spot. Now police would be on their way. He keeps firing. Walking down this hallway. The system tracking his every move. Another alert. As the police are watching it all in real time. Shots fired outside room 209, second floor admin office. There was another one right over here. This is when we can run out and go this way. Now that I know where the shot was, I know he's past me. Run out of here. Come on. It could be my only chance to get away. And within seconds, I'm out of the building. We were able to get outside safely because I knew exactly where the shooter was, where the shots were being fired, and the best escape route out away from the shooter. It's a game changer and it's gonna save lives. That's Ed Davis, Boston's legendary police commissioner. At the helm during the Boston bombings and countless shootings, now working for the company. When a situation like this unfolds, it's chaotic. No one knows where to go or what to do. This device will give us the information that we need to go directly to the threat. Okay, at this point, I will turn the floor over to Brian to answer whatever questions you guys might have uh, posted as I was giving the presentation. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. Um, we didn't get uh, any questions. If anybody does have any questions, you know, please type it in the Q&A box. We'll answer them for you. Uh, I have had questions in the past, so 
We'll kind of use some of our history now and our understanding of what people may ask. So one of the big questions we always have is, you know, how do the email and text alerts go out? And what it is is we will tie to your email server so that we can send messaging out to the, all the different uh, receivers to make sure that they can get the information, get it accurately, and get it in a timely manner. Um, another question we have quite often is, you know, have we ever had, do we have any false alerts or any false activations? And we're very proud to say that our system, because of the dual technology, and it actually is a patented technology, we have received our patent now on our technology, it allows us to have a near zero false alert rate or false detection. And the only detections we've ever had is where if somebody forgot to put the system in a test mode when they were testing the system, um, or we have a couple of manufacturers that use arc welding equipment and forgot to deactivate the sensors before the arc welder started, but technically the system functioned, it worked as it was supposed to, they just forgot to put it in test mode. We have never had a false detection uh, for our system and we've never actually even had a false activation that we know of. Uh, our system is kind of like a life insurance policy. You're putting it in so that when you need it, it's there. But we've never had an activation from an actual active shooter to date. Um, and one of the other questions uh, we've had quite often is, you know, can shots be detected in rooms? Technically, because we are both an acoustical and an infrared visual system, we have to be able to see the infrared to validate the fact that the, the acoustics we heard is a gunshot. If we can see into the room through a door or doorway, we, we probably can detect it. We can't see around corners. We can't see through, through solid walls, things like that. So based upon that, you have to design your system or, or think of, you know, how can I apply the technology to get the best coverage in the most high-risk areas. Uh, Eric, uh, I'll, I'll turn it over to you to say, you know, are there any other questions that maybe you've had that I didn't think of right now? No, I mean, that, that covers it. I, I appreciate you bringing up the fact that we've had zero false alerts. That's, uh, that's a big uh, question that comes up all the time. So uh, did anybody else uh, chime in? Actually, uh, actually a, couple, a couple of questions are coming in now, so thank you. We really appreciate that. One of the questions is, you know, how high can the, the, the devices be mounted? So our typical mounting is either on a ceiling or on a wall. We can both be both ceiling and wall mounted. We say the typical mounting is 8 to 12 feet off finished floor, up to 16 feet. And if you need to go above that, then we have our engineering team look at the space and what some of the acoustics are around it to see if the sensor can actually work. But if you stick within the 8 to 12 off finished floor, which is what most ceiling heights are in office buildings and areas, you're very safe with, with that application. Uh, there's a question, does the system need to interface with an existing IT network that can operate on a standalone? That really is, is up to, to you know, the integration company who's installing it, such as Databox, is do they want to put a VPN, a, a VPN off of a, uh, an existing network? They want to put a separate network in. We're agnostic to that. It really depends on both uh, Datavox and the customer. How do they want to make it work? Because all we need is an inter interrelation connection to share the data with so it can go out to the third-party systems. There's another question. If the shooter poses as a security guard working for the company, how can we tell the difference about the aid of a camera versus police shooting? So the way I like to answer this is, you are correct. We are the ears to the system. We hear the gunshots. We hear exactly where they are at. Your video system is now going to be provide the eyes to the system, to eyes to your situation awareness. Where is the shooter actually at? Where are they going? What direction are they moving in the building? So the two systems together, working with a full integration, is what's giving you that full situation awareness of how to react to it. And through the video, you should be able to tell, is that a security guard, is that a police officer, or is that someone posing as, as a security guard? Hopefully, you know, your team would know all their, all their own employees. Uh, that is that someone trying to fake the system or not, or to fool the system. Okay, and what if the shooter is using a suppressor? Will the device work? We have tested our system, as Eric said earlier, down to a 9 millimeter or 22 caliber weapon, which are very small weapons as well as you know, high power weapons. And we even tested it with um, some type of suppression device on the, uh, the, the, the uh, weapon. 
we still can detect gunshots. However, the detection range, which is normally 40 feet radius from the sensor on a uh, semicircular uh, hemispherical layout, so it's a half circle design, it will be reduced a little bit from the 40 feet, maybe down to 25 feet. It's just because there, there will be a little bit of, of buffering or, or muffling of the sound. But even with a lot of the, uh, the suppressors that are out there today, we can still hear and detect the gunshot. Uh, and then are there any installs in school districts? Absolutely. Uh, we, we'll, we could definitely provide uh, some reference accounts to you. Uh, there's several screws all across the country that have that. I just don't have the list in front of me right now, but we can provide that to Databox and they can share that uh, with uh, the attendees here. Any other questions? Anybody uh, have any questions they want to type in fast? Yeah, Brian, I see one here that uh, they're asking for rough square footage per sensor. Uh, you touched on it has a 40-foot radius. Uh, if you guys think of like a bubble or a globe, you cut it in half. That's what this uh, coverage area looks like from the sensor. So it, it goes out 40 feet as well in front of it as well as to the side. And the total square footage is about 2,500 square feet per sensor. So good question. There's a question, uh, is it possible to have custom audio alerts for the computer software for those closest to the shooter to help respond faster? So I, I'm, I'm gonna take a little bit of liberty here in trying to understand the question. Um, I think what you're asking is, if it's out in, if someone's in the field, can we give them some type of unique tone so they can, they can understand that? And the answer would be yes. Going back to using the relay board that uh, Eric was talking about earlier, an interface board, we can close a relay contact that can then do an audible sounder, even visual sounders, maybe flashing lights or, or whatever you want to do. We can create that so that people understand exactly where the shooter is at, what is happening, and the different tones are, are what is being used. If you tie it to a mass notification system, then we can actually do pre-programmed messaging from that system, and it can send out messages and tones based upon where the shooter is at in the building. And if it's, a, if it's a, a, a distributed system, it can tell you know people where the shooter is not at to get out, people where the shooter is at to take you know run, hide, fight, take cover, so they're, they're protected. So again, we can do a lot of that. It all depends on the third-party systems we're connecting with. Another question. An insider threat may know where the cameras and the equipment is located and can destroy them first. So how can we mitigate that risk? Yeah, that's that, that's really it, it's a challenge. If someone knows where the cameras are at or knows how to avoid them, it, it, you know, it's it is quite often you know hard to do that. They can try to you know, overcome the system. However, the the gunshot detector, if you look at what it looks like, actually looks like a motion detector, or I used to say a glass break detector from years ago. They may not realize what that function is. It, it even looks sometimes like a thermostat. All depends on how you want to look at it. So they probably don't know that's what that device is, uh, but the camera system, they can try to avoid and, and defeat that. But at least you're still getting notifications with the gunshot detectors as to where they're at in the building, where they were last known, and, and possibly you know what kind of path they're taking by using that breadcrumb trail and following them on, on a map of, of where they're going. Hey, hey Brian, uh, I'd like to expand on that a little bit, and then I think um, we, we may need to move on to our fever detection from there. and We can take the questions and, and answer them after the presentation, uh, if you guys are okay with that. But, uh, one thing I want to make note of, and to Brian's point, is that this system is not designed to to monitor a, we'll call it a targeted shooting. Uh, so if someone knows where these what these sensors are for, and they go to uh, an office that doesn't have one, and they're targeting someone, that's not what this is designed for. It's designed for a mass shooting. So the idea is, in a mass shooting, these guys, they, they walk through the corridors and fire people and keep moving. They don't want to get trapped in a room. The idea is to shoot and to move. And so we design these systems, we engineer them in such a way that uh, we, we monitor the corridors as well as mass meeting areas like cafeterias and uh, lobbies, things of that nature. So um, you always know the location of the shooter within that, uh, that respect. So. I just wanted to point out that this is not something that uh, is following a shooter for a targeted shooting, if you will. This is more for a mass shooting. So, at any rate, um, is that Brian? Are you, are you ready to move on with the fever detection? 
Absolutely. Any other questions come in, I'm writing them down so we can address them later or provide a, a written feedback after the uh, webinar. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to move on. Um, with the fever detection, I just have a few slides to go over with these guys. There's no videos. So uh, whatever questions you have, uh, we'll answer them at the end, end as well. So share my screen here. Okay, so fever detection. What is fever detection? So if you think about uh, when people start to come back to work and students come back to school, you want to be able to put procedures in place <clears throat> to curtail the spread of any of the COVID disease, right? So what we have developed yeah, my apologies, I'm trying to pull up another document for you. Okay, so, sorry about that. Uh, <clears throat> the system is designed to be a quick and effective way of screening and detecting any individuals that may have an elevated body temperature. Elevated temperature is typically a key indicator of uh, an infectious disease like the coronavirus or the flu or the common cold, things of that nature. So being able to identify those folks uh, very quickly and uh, in, in mass numbers is why this system was developed. So how does it work? Uh, you set it up in a way that these cameras, uh, it's actually a uh, cellular phone connected to a thermal camera. And then uh, as the person walks past, the camera, as you can see over here on the left, uh, we are taking the temperature from their, the skin off of their forehead, which is an indicator of core body temperature. And I'll, I'll get into that in a little more detail here in just a moment. How accurate is, is the system? Uh, the system actually is, uh, produces readings within a half of a degree Fahrenheit of an FDA-approved temperature gun. And <clears throat> uh, I'll show you how that works here uh, in just a moment. So what's included with this system? So each camera, uh, as I mentioned, is uh, you have a cellular phone, you have a thermal camera, you have a power bank, and then you also have a tripod that it sits on. This allows the system to be mobile. So uh, I get questions all the time about, uh, do you want to mount this on the wall or can I mount it on the wall? Uh, the, the idea behind it is you want to keep it mobile. That way, uh, if you have an entrance where people are coming in, but let's say you close that entrance and you want to move the system to another lobby area, you have the liberty of doing so. So uh, again, with each unit, this is what you would get with the system. So this is a chart that, as I mentioned to you a moment ago, uh, we read the temperature of the forehead skin that correlates with the body temperature. So a 92 degree Fahrenheit reading uh, on the skin of the forehead would mean that the individual has a normal body temperature, which uh, if you remember, we I believe that uh, the medical field still uses the 98.6 degrees as an average. But if you look on the left-hand side, I'm not sure if you can see those numbers, but uh, in the green section, that means that the person is quote unquote healthy. Uh, as they get closer to the red, if you read a skin temperature of say 98.4, that means that the core temperature is now at 100.7. And that's a telltale sign of a fever, meaning an infectious disease is in the body and the body's trying to fight it off. Some of the frequently asked questions with this system uh, is, do I have to register it with a wireless carrier? The answer is no. Uh, the, these cameras are, I'm sorry, these phones are downloaded with the AI software that is used to read the temperatures. Um, and they do come shipped with your standard apps, but in the near future, we will be shipping these out in kiosk mode, meaning 
that none of the apps will work. Uh, let's see, can the system integrate with others? Uh, in about two weeks, uh, two to four weeks, we're, we're currently working on it, but we will be able to integrate this system with uh, video management systems. And uh, I'll explain that in a little more detail as well here in just a moment. What is the lead time for delivery? Uh, depending on how many units you buy, but uh, let's say you bought anywhere from 10 to 50, 75 units, that typically takes three days from the day that we receive payment. Uh, if you buy 100 or more, that could take five to seven days. What's included with the system, we just went over that just a moment ago, um, but uh, the uh, AI software downloaded to the phone, you have the Android phone, the clear thermal camera, a power bank for the camera, and the tripod along with a 12-month warranty. What are some of the installation requirements? Uh, again, this is a standalone camera, so it's used um, with a monitor in place. So uh, when people are walking into the building, you want to be able to monitor it so you have someone there with the camera watching as people walk in, and you're getting readings of, of each person that comes in. And if they are normal, you see the green box. If they have an elevated body temperature, uh, a red box is actually drawn around their face, and the phone takes a snapshot of that elevated reading. And that snapshot can actually be emailed or text to um, anybody in your network. <clears throat> How many people can be monitored? Um, general consensus is uh, this system can read about 20 people at any one given time uh, if their faces are visible. What does that mean? If, if two people are, if someone is standing behind someone else, then um, uh, it would not be able to take its reading. Uh, also, if they're wearing a hat or if they're wearing glasses, sometimes that can block their forehead. So uh, if you as a monitor were watching folks coming into the building, you would ask them to remove their hat and their glasses to take the reading. Can the device take readings of a person in a vehicle? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the only stipulation of that, or two stipulations actually, uh, the camera would need to be under some type of canopy, so you would need a covering over the camera, um, especially for inclement weather. But if you um, uh, were to pull up to the camera in a car, you would need to roll the window down uh, for approximately 20 seconds. Reason being is sometimes if they're using their climate control, whether that's air conditioning, or their heater, uh, that can throw the reading off. So if you were to use it in a parking lot, you would ask uh, the folks to roll the window down for 20 seconds. At what speed can the device take a reading? Uh, we recommend that it's at a leisure walking pace. So anything faster than that uh, could possibly throw the reading off. How are targets identified? I just mentioned that to you. We draw either a green or red box around their forehead, depending on the temperature. How are monitors notified? So let's say you have someone uh, there with the camera uh, and they're watching people walk in. Again, the box is drawn around the forehead, but you can also uh, set up an audible sound to let you know that uh, someone has, has an elevated temperature. Uh, it could be that um, if someone was to receive a text message, as I mentioned to you earlier, uh, if the phone was set up in such a way that uh, you were using, let's say, your, your company Wi-Fi and you had a data connection, then you could text or email people inside the company if need be. So internet connection required, I just touched on that. You do not need an internet connection uh, if you're staying internally within your company. You can use a company Wi-Fi for data. Can the base temperature be adjusted? So these things are set up in a way to read um, up to a certain degree, and once it hits that threshold, that's when it notifies you that someone has an elevated temperature. If you wanted to adjust that base temperature for any reason, today the system does not, but I am told that they are working on it, and that should be out in, in a few weeks. So the capability will be there in the near future. What type of phone is included with the device? Right now, this is a Samsung phone. 
Uh, that is all that they are shipping out at this time. Uh, if you wanted to use an iPhone, right now you cannot, but uh, that is something they are also looking at for the future. Okay, so again, those are some of the standard questions I get. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, Brian is monitoring those and we'll address them here in just a moment. But one thing I'd like to point out at this time is some of the standard operating procedures. Uh, this system is a very easy system to use. Again, it's just a phone and a thermal camera. There's really not a whole lot to the system itself. The bigger conversation would be, what do you do with the information once you receive it that someone has an elevated temperature? So these are some of the procedures in talking with my other clients that we have developed over time that I would like to address with you guys today to kind of get you thinking, should you move forward with this system, what does that look like for you as a company? Now, you want to try to create some choke points. Um, you know, in, in this day and time when folks are starting to come back to work, uh, it's not that difficult to tell them, uh, we need you guys to come through these choke points. We're going to lock all the other doors from uh, anyone coming in because we need to monitor everyone. Uh, you want to create signage. And when you do that, get your legal team involved early, right? So you want to be able to put signs on the buildings, uh, direct them to where to go to the choke points, et cetera. Uh, you want to notify, notify your employees before they return to the office. Call them, email them, let them know that, th that this is coming so they're not caught off guard. So what happens if uh, a test fails? So currently, uh, some of our clients are telling their employees to go home and work from home. They fail a test. And uh, there's others that, if that doesn't work for them, they are creating a staging area or staging areas, and they're isolating these people. They're putting them in a room, and they're creating a secondary test. So um, the first test being the phone, this is meant to take a preliminary scan of multiple people in, <clears throat> in a short period of time, and uh, there is no contact. So this, this phone, this camera is set up and designed in a way that it reads people from four to eight feet away. So there is no contact. Now, if you want to isolate folks and uh, create a secondary testing area, then uh, you can use thermometers, uh, thermometer guns, whatever you choose. Uh, finally, determine the number of monitors. Uh, you want to make sure you have the right number of people, and you may even want to give them PPE if they need it. Some of the disclaimers that I need to touch on, uh, this is not a medical device. This is not intended for clinical measurements. Again, it's meant to take a preliminary scan, multiple people coming in at a given point. Uh, so it's, it's really meant for when folks start to return to work, then you can create procedures for that situation. It only reads the temperature from the forehead scan. It does not take a core temperature reading. It only takes readings from the forehead. And again, cannot detect core temperature. At this point, uh, Brian, I'll leave the floor to you to answer any questions that may have come in. Okay, I uh, appreciate that, Eric. We did have a couple questions come in, and, and I, we are being uh, very aware of the time. We're getting near the end, so if there's any questions that did come in that we can't answer, we will provide written responses after this webinar. But uh, one of the big questions that comes in, is, is, and it's asked quite often, is how close does the person have to be to the camera? The uh, the detection range that we say for optimum detection is between 6 and 10 feet from the actual camera itself, from the sensor. So as people are walking up, it'll read them coming up, and it can read multiple people at a time as there's people in line. It'll actually start reading all those people as they start walking up towards the camera itself. But there's a question, what if their head is turned or if they're wearing a cap or something else? It is advised we have to see the forehead. We have to see right around the eyes. That is the area that the, the detector and the, the algorithm is looking to take the, uh, the temperature for accurate reading. So they're going to have to have their head at least somewhat aimed. And that's why there's someone there at the device as people walk in saying, just look at the camera as you walk in and keep walking uh, so it can actually get a good detection. Um, let's see, we had a couple other questions. Um, 
Just bear with me a second. Is there an audio alarm for high temperatures? That is an option. You can, uh, as, as Eric said earlier, we put a red box around the image if it detects a high, a high temperature on that person. You can also then sound uh, off the phone itself an audible, an audible alert so that whoever is monitoring the system realizes that person needs to be pulled out of line for secondary um, review procedures. That can be anywhere from having them rewalk through the line a second time uh, or using secondary uh, procedures such as using an oral thermometer or something else to check their actual true body core temperature. Uh, I think that's it for the questions for right now. There are a few other questions, but I think it's best that we can uh, answer them uh, in writing afterwards and uh, open it up to uh, the, the team for any questions that they may have or any comments they want to have for this device. Thank you so much, Brian and Eric. Um, as Brian mentioned, we are getting close to time, but I do see a couple of questions that, of course, we will follow up with you as well. And if any of you are interested in the system or would like a one-on-one -on -one session to learn a little bit more, please contact us and we'll be happy to set that up. All right, well, thank you guys so much for attending today's webinar. As a, as a reminder, the recording link for today's session will be emailed to all attendees 24 to 48 hours post-event. If you did enjoy today's session and would like to hear more, we do offer new webinars weekly. Please check our Databox website for more information on upcoming sessions. And as always, we would love to hear your feedback on our events. Once this webinar has ended, you will be redirected to a survey page. If you could please take a moment to complete the survey before closing out your browser, we'd greatly appreciate it. Okay, that concludes our session for today. Thank you again to Eric and Brian for a great presentation, and thank you all for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.